in the ever evolving landscape of human civilization, we find ourselves at a crossroads, grappling with the complexities and contradictions that have come to define our modern existence. As we stand at the precipice of a world, teetering between the desire to save or destroy, it is imperative that we pause and delve deeper into the nature of reality itself. The material world, with its tangible manifestations of wealth, possessions, and social status, has long captivated the human psyche. We have become so entangled in the pursuit of these external markers of success that we have often lost sight of the true essence of our being. As the philosopher Bertrand Russell observed, the fundamental cause of trouble in the world today is that the stupid are cocksure while the intelligent are full of doubt. This observation underscores the need to question the assumptions and illusions that have come to shape our understanding of the world. Money, for instance, is a prime example of a human construct that has taken on a life of its own. While it serves as a practical tool for the exchange of goods and services, we have allowed it to become a measure of our worth and a symbol of power. However, as the author pointed out, you cannot eat money. A stark reminder that material wealth is ultimately a means to an end, not an end in itself. The philosopher Henry David Thoreau echoed this sentiment when he wrote, A man is rich in proportion to the number of things which he can afford to let alone. This idea is further reinforced by the insights of the philosopher Fritjof Capra, who observed that the fundamental change of vision in modern physics is a change from things to patterns, from substance to patterns, from substance to process, from isolated objects to interconnected networks. Capra's perspective underscores the fundamental shift in understanding that is required to transcend the illusion of the material world. Similarly, our relationship with time has become increasingly complex and distorted. We often find ourselves trapped in the illusion of the past and the anxiety of the future, failing to fully embrace the present moment. As the author aptly states, the present is the only real time, there is no past, and there will be no future. This concept is not a new one as it has been explored by various philosophical and spiritual traditions throughout history. In the Eastern philosophical tradition, the practice of meditation has long been seen as a means of transcending the limitations of the mind and reconnecting with the essence of one's being. As the author notes, when Easterners are asked about what they meditate, they seem a bit perplexed. We don't meditate on something. We just meditate. This distinction highlights the fundamental difference between the Western and Eastern approaches to understanding the nature of reality. While the Western mind tends to be more analytical and focused on the accumulation of knowledge, the Eastern tradition emphasizes the importance of direct experience and the cultivation of a state of presence. As the author astutely observes, if you suddenly say that your life has no meaning, you're identifying with a word. You need to understand about meditation that it's not an exercise. It's not gymnastics. It's not gymnastics. It's not a common self improvement procedure. Indeed, the purpose of meditation is not to achieve a specific goal or to improve oneself, but rather to simply be. As the author suggests, someone does it not because it's good for you, but simply because you enjoy it. This shift in perspective is critical as it allows us to move beyond the endless pursuit of external validation and instead connect with the inherent wholeness and sacredness of our existence. The author's insights into the nature of music and art further underscore the importance of this shift in perspective. As the author notes, music means nothing beyond itself. 
a statement that challenges the notion that art must have a deeper meaning or purpose. Instead, the author suggests that the beauty and power of music lies in its ability to transport us into the present moment, to center us and release us into reality. This understanding of the present moment as a vast and expansive realm, rather than a mere thin line, is a profound revelation. It speaks to the fundamental interconnectedness of all things, a concept that has been explored by various spiritual and scientific traditions. In the Christian tradition, for example, the idea of the eternal now is reflected in the concept of the divine presence, as expressed in the biblical passage I am, that I am, Exodus 3.14. This notion of a timeless and ever-present divine essence is echoed in the author's description of the eternal, now in which past and future fall away. Similarly, in the field of quantum physics, the notion of the present moment as a vast and interconnected realm has been explored through the concept of the quantum field. As the physicist Irvin Laszlo explains, the quantum field is the ground of all being the substratum of reality. It is the implicate order that underlies the explicate order of the material world. By embracing this understanding of the present moment as a sacred and boundless expression of existence, we begin to see the world and our place in it in a radically different light. The author's assertion that everything means nothing in themselves challenges the human tendency to imbue the world with predetermined meanings and values. Instead, the author suggests that we must learn to see beyond the illusions that often confuse and distance us from the truth, a process that requires a fundamental shift in our perception and relationship with the world around us. As the philosopher Alan Watts observed, the real you is not a person but a pattern, a form of behavior, a style of consciousness. By cultivating a deeper awareness and appreciation of the present moment, we can begin to transcend the limitations of our individual egos and connect with the vast and interconnected web of life that surrounds us. As the author eloquently states, by embracing this way of living, we find inner peace and joy and also contribute to the transformation of the world around us. In this way, the pursuit of true existence becomes not only a personal journey of self-discovery, but also a means of actively shaping the future of our world. As the philosopher Eckhart Tolle reminds us, the primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation, but your thoughts about it. By shifting our thoughts and perspectives, we can unlock the immense transformative potential that lies within each and every moment. Ultimately, the author's exploration of the nature of reality and the human condition serves as a clarion call for us to reconsider the foundations upon which we have built our lives and our societies. It invites us to let go of the illusions and distractions that have captivated us, and to instead embrace the vastness and wonder of our own being. As we navigate the complexities of the modern world, we would do well to heed the wisdom of the author and to cultivate a deeper sense of presence, interconnectedness, and reverence for the miracle of existence. For in doing so, we may just find the keys to a more fulfilling, harmonious, and sustainable future not just for ourselves, but for all of the interconnected web of life that we are a part of. The transcendence of the ego and the interconnectedness of all things. At the heart of the author's message lies the recognition that the pursuit of true existence requires a fundamental shift in our relationship with the self and the world around us. The philosopher Alan Watts' observation that the real you is not a person, but a pattern, a form of behavior, a style of consciousness, 
underscores the limitations of the individual ego and the need to transcend its confines. By cultivating a deeper awareness and appreciation of the present moment, we can begin to see the world and our place in it in a radically different light. The author's assertion that everything means nothing in themselves challenges. The human tendency to imbue the world with predetermined meanings and values, instead inviting us to see beyond the illusions that often confuse and distance us from the truth. This notion of transcending the limitations of the ego and recognizing the interconnectedness of all things is not unique to the author's perspective. It has been explored and articulated by various spiritual and philosophical traditions throughout history. In the Eastern spiritual tradition, the concept of non-duality, the understanding that all things are fundamentally interconnected and that the separation between self and other is an illusion, has long been a central tenet. The Advaita Vedanta school of Hinduism, for example, teaches that the true nature of the self, Atman, is one with the ultimate reality, Brahman, and that the recognition of this unity is the path to enlightenment. Similarly, in the Christian mystical tradition, the idea of the divine spark within each individual, the recognition that the divine essence resides within us all, has been a source of profound spiritual insight and transformation. As the theologian Meister Eckhart wrote, the eye with which I see God is the same eye with which God sees me. The quantum physicist, Erwin Schrödinger, known for his famous thought experiment with the cat, also explored the concept of the interconnectedness of all things. He wrote, The total number of minds in the universe is one. In quantum physics, we have learned that the separate ness of objects is an illusion, that the world is fundamentally a web of interconnections. By embracing this understanding of the fundamental unity and interconnectedness of all things, we can begin to transcend the limitations of our individual egos and contribute to the transformation of the world around us. As the author eloquently states, by embracing this way of living, we find inner peace and joy and also contribute to the transformation of the world around us. This process of transformation is not merely a personal journey, but one that has the potential to ripple outward and create lasting change in our communities and our societies. As the philosopher Eckhart Tolle reminds us, the primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation, but your thoughts about it. By shifting our thoughts and perspectives, we can unlock the immense transformative potential that lies within each and every moment. Ultimately, the author's exploration of the nature of reality and the human condition serves as a clarion call for us to reconsider the foundations upon which we have built our lives and our societies. It invites us to let go of the illusions and distractions that have captivated us and to instead embrace the vastness and wonder of our own being. As we navigate the complexities of the modern world, we would do well to heed the wisdom of the author and to cultivate a deeper sense of presence, interconnectedness, and reverence for the miracle of existence. For in doing so, we may just find the keys to a more fulfilling, harmonious, and sustainable future not just for ourselves, but for all of the interconnected web of life that we are a part of.